let's move on to persistent techniques. So I just explained uh, just uh, different ways of doing the behavior analysis. And okay, I'm at the slide 21 and persistence. So this one means basically whether or not malware can survive after each reboot. So I call it as a persistence technique. And for that, malware use some can use either registry key or file system. There's are some specific uh, directory. So whichever the executable exists in like some startup directory, it is supposed to run when a user log in. So malware can uh, copy itself to the certain location in the file system, or it can use like a I will go in detail. There's like a DLS search order uh, hijacking. These are also just uh, manipulating the how file system or the how uh, OS works to grab some DLLs. This one, and or you can just actually change, you know, put it, it basically modify existing some the system files and then put it itself. So whenever you put there's something missing here. Okay, services. Simple malware just installed. Right. Oh, actually, that's interesting. Oh, because why? Because it's, uh, how the registry key, yeah. right? So yeah, yeah we were going to see the services, you know, to persist. But I will explain inside the registry key because there is a lot of those and can persist. And another thing is that this is a master record. It on the a disk, it, it can copy itself into the master record. So whenever it's a disk uh, reboot, it still can run. Or you can hide in the BIOS and this one, uranium enrichment cent centrifuge PLC. What's gonna be? Yeah, you know, this uh, stuff's net. Just I have it, have it, put it there just for fun, because it actually hide into the, the programming program of a logic circuit. The the malware copied itself to the circuit, and the it actually uh, maintained this persistent on inside circuit circuit. But in this class. We are going to look at from here to up, okay? Then I will move to page 24. All right, now we saw already this one registry key, right? And if it's uh, under HKLM, that means the system wide you know, setting, right? So for this registry key, it is just uh, some common ones that have been used. It, it does not say there's some uh, unknown registry key. If it is used for the persistent, it, it does not mean it's less important. Actually, those are the, some keys. You know, you should be you know make sure you are not missing some you know key that is being. Uh, it, use for the persistence. And when you say present one and for the shell like a win login shell, so shell and like a user in it. So if there is any uh execute path being uh, specified for, for this registry key, that means those executables are executed once a user logs onto the system. So every time user log on then that executable will gonna be uh, executed. And app init DLL is uh, once you specify any DLL, but we want to re revisit uh, most of uh, most of these uh, registry keys. But just uh, to briefly mentioning, uh, I'm mentioning it. And app init DLL is the one one. If you specify some DLL uh, into that registry key, then every executable that use user thirty two that DLL will uh, will use all DLL that is specified in this registry key. Okay, and for uh, no DLL, this one is also another. Uh, let me actually not kind of quite sure. So either known okay known DLL. If let's say kernel thirty two of uh, one is one uh, executable file user kernel thirty two, then it goes to this you know basically this registry uh, entry first and load it. But let me actually think, keep think whether or not, no, actually, so the, 
Sorry about that. No, that's what it is. Okay, no DLL. If for executable use one, I know DLL, then it check if it is specified here. Then it goes to a certain directory and read the DLL from that directory. That's what it is. Okay, if I'm wrong, I want to correct myself. I kind of was not slightly vague about that information, but I think that's what it is. It just look for certain directory to search a certain DLL. And but we, we have a topic for that one, All right? And services is the one we already looked. If service being registered, then it will be uh, listed under the service registry key. And another one is a uh, image file execution options. Actually, under this here, there is like a debugger uh, value. So once that value is being specified, then whenever on the executable runs, then on the uh, behind, actually the uh, the executable file that is listed as a debugger, they actually run first before before uh, that one. And we have another exercise for this uh, this particular registry key. And another one is a browser helper object that is nothing but like ActiveX. You can put the ActiveX, then you know when uh, Internet Explorer runs, then you wanna load those ActiveX then. Uh, object at the same time so we can basically run through the internet explorer any question a difference why there are separate uh, registry key uh, trees the sub trees and i found one in the book, let's say here, it says managing the window 2003 registry. So basically, when in the before window, window 2003, there's a, in a lot of application for the Windows 985, right? And the application used, uh, they are using the registry keys that is uh, you know, located in the AKLM software, you know, the Windows and has, you know, keys underneath, right? And they, they made, then they made a new, you know, Windows to, uh, 2003, but they wanted to throw away all the uses application, right? So, so basically, what they do is they maintain the data key trees for the backward uh, compatibility. Okay. Then they made right. <laughs> Windows, Windows NT is just in the for the new applications. So they're still just keeping it for the uh, backward compatibility. Any more question? Good. Right. And going to 25. So I just uh, highlight this one because we are not actually looking at the same registry key. We are not because this is a current user specific. So it has the same thing, wrong key, but it's more specific to the a certain user. Okay? And same as uh, there's a logon and there's another logon shell, but this one. This, this is also a registry key that can be changed by a malware that has only user privilege. For, for that one, this one requires an administrator privilege. Okay. For XP case, mostly people uh, it use, uh, run it as a administrator. So it, there was, a, so there was sometimes said, no, since Windows, you just put the administrator privilege. So, you know, everyone can, everyone can, in fact, you can, you know, the malware can change anything. But I will not go to that uh, this uh, discussion. But Windows 7 I think is better, basically. 